set for the start of this afternoon's hockey game. A key game for both teams. The Soviets can ill afford a loss. A Canadian victory would move the Canadian team into a good position for the medal. Brian Hart is the referee this afternoon. Jeff Jay and Mark Perks are the two linesmen. All three officials are from the United States. And the Soviet goaltender, Vitaly Semelov, 19 years of age, and he has given up a tournament average of three goals per game. This will be the second game for Mike Moffat. He's from the Kingston Junior Club. He has been drafted by the Boston Bruins. His first start, he gave up one goal in a 5-1 victory over Finland on Tuesday night. Kushin is out there with Semenov and Vasilyev for the Soviet Union. Havshai between Moeller and Arneel for the Canadian team. It's Kushin in across the line, tried to drop it for Semenov, picked up by the Canadians and cleared to center ice. The Soviets shoot it back in, but Kushin was way in across the line, offside. Don, I think what we're going to have to, to watch for out there today is, as Dave King mentioned beforehand, it's really important that they, the Canadians play their own game and not worry so much about the, 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 US, or the USSR team as so many teams have done in the past. From the face-off, Butcher in his own zone for Canada. Ahead to Moeller in the center ice area. He tried to feed it to Arneel. It was intercepted by Stelnoff. A long lead pass to the Canadian line. Vasiliev couldn't handle it. And the Soviets have to try and regroup in the center ice area. It's stolen by Habshide. Then he in turn had it poked away as he came in across the Canadian line. Semenov always dangerous for the Soviets. He gets the shot away and Moffat is able to clear the rebound. Semenov went directly for the goal after letting that shot go. He was taken into the goal by Butcher. Now it's brought down the ice and dumped into the Soviet zone. Moeller goes back in behind the net. He tried to feed it out front. It hit a leg. Back behind the net now. It's Habshide looking for Arneel. Arneel jamming away at it. It's loose in front of the net. And finally it's cleared out by Tirukov. On the right side, Vasiliev trying to go around the defenseman, Vasiliev. He's taken in against the boards. The centering pass is held for a face-off by the Canadian goaltender, Moffat. Well, the Soviets certainly do not get out of position. Although that puck is in front of the Soviet net, the two wingers were up deep at the blue line and were ready for a three-on-two breakaway. Both sides making a change. Shapitsin comes out with Yashin and Roshin for the Soviet Union. From the face-off, it's taken in behind the Canadian goal. Jim Patrick, one of three Winnipeggers on this Team Canada roster. Dumping it down the ice. The Soviets clear it to the neutral zone. Picked up by Kluzak and dumped in, but Murray was trapped in across the line offside. Evgeny Roshan of the Soviet Union. And they have a number of talented players on this hockey club. He's one of them. They were beaten 3-2 the other night by Czechoslovakia. Now in the center ice area, Ryu drops it back for Patrick. Over on the wing, Kluzak, a big 6-4, 210-pounder, had a little difficulty handling it. Ryu loses it in the center ice area. Now it's Yashin in across the line. He tried to drop pass, dumped out to center ice by the Canadian. Yashin again in across the line. Yashin trying to move into position. He's tied up. The puck slides loose along the board. Picked up there by Biakin. Now it goes loose in the Canadian zone. Patrick over on the far side for Boutillier. Up ahead into the center ice area. It's dumped into the Soviet zone. Biakin goes back into his own zone after it. He clears it to the neutral zone. Randy Mahler is back there for the Canadian team. Mahler goes back into his own zone as the Canadians regroup. Lead pass into the center ice area. Eakin on the wing for Steer and he fired it wide. Picked up along the boards by the Soviets. Kadyasov on the right side for Priyakin. Priyakin trying to work out front. Centered it. Nobody there. Back to the point. There's the shot. It hit a leg and went wide. That came off the stick of Kurashev. Dumps the center ice now. Morrison knocks over the Soviet player at the blue line, but Priyakin coming back picks it up and takes it to safety behind his own net. 17-12, the time remaining in the first period. It's scoreless, the Soviet Union and Canada. The puck loose in the Soviet zone. Priyakin going back of his own net. He gets it over to Kurashev. Kurashev in against the board. This finally kicked loose. Morrison goes back of the goal out front. And Sear couldn't get a shot away as he was tied up. 
In against the board, Sear trying to poke at Frey. Finally, it's brought out to center ice by the Soviet. A long shot into the Canadian zone by Shapitsin. It went off the glass in back of the Canadian goal. Back to the point, Kurashev trying to keep it in, having a difficulty at the line, and finally Sear knocked it out to center ice. Shapitsin hangs it off the boards. He takes the check there from Muller as he heads to the bench on the change, and it's picked up by Strebe. Strebe in across the line. Slap shot, and it's wide of the goal. Back to the point. Muller shot. Knocked down for the score. see here, first of all, when the Canadians come into the zone, that shot just wide of the net, but it ends up paying off. The puck goes back to the point, the first shot comes, and he can, we see him just in position there, and finds that hole. We see again, where the Russian goaltender really had that angle covered well, but there was just some room open, it appeared to be, between his legs. on the goal by Grant Eakin. It's brought in across the line, but the Canadian team is called on the offside. Well, this tournament is a straight knockout affair, a round-robin event involving eight teams. And the Canadian team has already played two games, defeating Finland and Sweden, the defending champions. Tomorrow, in Bloomington, Minnesota, at the Met Center, they'll play the United States. They'll play Germany on the 30th, Switzerland, and then Czechoslovakia. As we said, it's a straight round-robin format. And at the conclusion of the tournament, obviously, the team with the most wins will emerge as the champion. In the event of a tie, there is a tie-breaking procedure that will be determined by games involving the two teams. And then if that doesn't settle the issue on goals scored in the tournament. At the moment, the Canadian team very much in contention for the gold medal, undefeated so far and leading the Soviet Union by a score of 1-0 in the first period. Semenov plays it back into his own zone for Kalazov. It's lost in the center ice area. Kerry Wilson, the hero in the game against Sweden with that winning goal, working down to the line, and he loses it. Kushin in the center ice area was tied up. The puck is picked up along the boards by Butcher, and it's taken in against the boards and held for a face-off. The Canadian team making a change with 15-19 remaining in this first period. Here's Dave Morrison, Don. I, I know this player fairly well. He was my first draft choice in, in Peterborough the year that I left. His father, Jimmy Morrison, a, a former pro hockey player as well. It's fired into the Canadian zone, up along the boards, out into the center ice area, taken there by the Soviets. Shapitsin is hammered in against the boards as the puck is dumped back into the Canadian zone. Now it's Habshot, a little too far on the wing for Muller, but Muller manages to poke it away from the Soviet, a shot to save, and looking for the rebound was Arneel back to the line. Kluzak's shot hit a leg. Fired in back of the goal, Muller out front, outside, couldn't get a shot away as he was tied up at the side of the goal by Kurashev. Now Arneel bumps into the Soviet player and manages to keep the puck in there. Abshai back of the net, out front, and Arneel was tied up and rammed right into the goaltender. And I think the penalty is coming up against the Soviet Union. From the Winnipeg Arena, this is World Junior Hockey on CBC Television. Team Canada with a 1-0 lead over the Soviet Union in this contest from the 1982 World Junior Hockey Championship. Canada had plenty of stars in this lineup, but it could have had even more. Dale Howarchuk was playing for the Jets in the NHL, and Grant Fuhrer was playing for the Oilers. They were both eligible. So, too, were junior stars like Brian Bellows and Tony Tanti, but they were unavailable due to injury. But this Canadian team had plenty of firepower and kept pressing the Soviets in the first period. Play underway in the Soviet zone. Back to the line. Randy Muller had a difficulty with it. He almost lost his balance, and the Soviets poke it out into the center ice area. Trekno breaking in, takes the shot, and the save is made by Moffat on the short side. Now it's LeMay circling in his own zone. The Canadians with the man advantage, dumping it into the corner. Ryu racing in after it. Ryu goes back to the net, still controlling for the Canadian team. Back to the line, over to the other side. Moeller takes the shot, and the save is made by Salomov. 
out to center ice comes Prakhnov. The Soviets trying to kill off this penalty to Kurashev. Tirikov plays it off the boards into the Canadian zone. And going back after it is Nyland. Nyland up on the right side for LeMay. A back pass for Ryu intercepted by the Soviets. And the Soviets, as we have seen so often with their national championship team, so adept at killing off penalties, moving that puck around in their own zone. Now Mahler, or Mueller, I should say, brings it in. However, it's whistled down on the offside. Well, Canada was forechecking real good, Don, and, and Stelmoff couldn't get that puck down the ice. He tried to take it back across his own blue line, and he had three Canadian forecheckers coming in after him. But on that last penalty, that was good work by Scott Arneal in the corner, and uh, the penalty taken by Khrushchev with a cross-check. And then you got a forecheck, the Soviets, that's what they're doing. 49 seconds remaining in the penalty to Kurashev, 13.24 the time in this first period. It's 1-0 Team Canada leading the Soviet Union in this World Junior Tournament coming your way from the Winnipeg Arena. Now it's Butcher circling in his own zone. Butcher, a late addition to the team from the Regina Pass of the Western Canada Junior League. It's fired into the Soviet zone. Miakin plays it off the boards and down the ice. Boutillier is chased by Priakin back in behind his own goal. Up on the wing, intended for Moeller. It slides off a skate into the Soviet zone. Along the boards, Priakin unable to get out as it's kept in by Arneal. Arneal working to the corner in front for Moeller. To have time, and the save is made by Salomov. Now it's picked up by Arneal in back of the net for Habshide. Abjad still controlling it to Arneal. His shot knocked down by the Soviet player Kalazov. It winds up in his equipment and he holds it for a faceoff just as the Soviet team returns to full strength. And now Kalazov and Arneal have an exchange of words in the corner. Some pretty good pressure, John, by the Canadian team working in that Soviet zone. And I think you're impressed with this young fellow, Scott Arneal. Well, we certainly are. He, uh, Bob Kilgore's done such a fine job with him in Cornwall. And you know, that's a typical Soviet style. Like, let's pick him up and sort of wrap it around Scott Arneal's neck. Well, that's how they'll play. And one thing about this game here we're seeing today, we're not seeing the big ice surface like we do in Europe. We have to play that style to beat them on our home ice. The base off to the right of Salomov. Vasiliev is knocked down in the corner, and the Soviets bring it out. A lead pass for Kushin in the center ice area to... Semenov, Semenov back to Kushin, shot, save, and Vasiliev couldn't grab the rebound. Back to the line, a shot just whistled wide of the goal by Kurashev. Now it's kept in by Belov. Belov to Semenov, knocked down by Eakin. Eakin has scored the goal. Here's a two and one break for Canada. Morrison with Sear. Morrison shoots the goal! doing an excellent job in their own end zone. Here we see a two-on-one break with Mark Morrison really utilizing that decoy and then just a, a, an incredible shot there. Just pick that upper upper hand corner. Here we see it from the second angle. You see there's not really an awful lot of room for him to shoot, but he finds that upper corner, puts it away, do nothing. Well, Gary, there's a good example of a good small hockey player, 150 pounds. Very knowledgeable hockey player, Mark Morrison. Draft by the United Rangers, and he hummed that one in the top corner. Mark Morrison, the 18-year-old who plays for the Victoria Cougars, moving Canada in front by a score of 2 nothing. Eakin drawing an assist on that goal. The Winnipeg boy with a goal and an assist. Off to a good start in this Boxing Day engagement with the Soviet Union. Sear in across the line. He dodges a check at the line from... To Yurikov, the puck goes loose in the Soviet zone. Shipson up along the boards. Trying to get out of there is Russian. Eakin falls with manages to get it over to Sear. Sear took a shot and it went wide. Eakin doing some good hitting in there for the Canadian team. And he in turn is belted. Morrison comes in to dish out a body check. And the Canadian team very effective with a forechecking job. Finally, the Soviets break out. A long shot by Yashin goes over top of the Canadian goal. Almost played carelessly at the side of the Canadian goal. Here's a lead pass for Wilson, but it crossed two lines offside. Some good hitting by that Canadian team in the offensive zone. Some real good forecheck. Good forecheck by Andrew Deacon and 
has certainly shot on Neal with two wingers on uh, the respective lines and, and young Mark Morrison took the man in there 150 pounder going to those corners you want you want to get him out in front of that net the face off in the Canadian zone to the right of goaltender Mike Moffat the Soviets make a change Starkov comes out with Odinsov and Trukno and it's dumped down the ice by the Canadian team Streeby is racing after it Streeby got to it first the puck goes loose Streeby pokes it along the board to Wilson, out front now, and it bounced over a stick as it's picked up by Trucno. Trucno dumps it down the ice, and going back after it is Gary Nyland. Nyland, according to Coach Dave King, has been one of his top performers so far in this tournament, along with Troy Murray, the captain of the club. Randy Moeller, in behind his own goal, playing it up along the board, kept in by the Soviets. Good check there as Odinsov is doused by Moeller. He falls on top of the puck, and a penalty unfortunately for the Canadian team upcoming with 10.25 left in the period. Today's game is coming to you from the in the Canadian zone. Randy Moeller off for cross-checking. We'll get a look at that Soviet power play now. The captain of the Canadian team, Troy Murray, who plays at the University of North Dakota, was drafted by the Chicago Blackhawks, clearing it out to center ice. The Akin in the center ice area now. So Odinsoff, Odinsoff is knocked down and the puck is cleared to center ice. Murray, who really dished out some punishing body checks in a game earlier against Finland, doing the same thing against the Soviets here. Now in across the line, Starkov tried to feed it in front and it's cleared to center ice by the Canadians. 123, the time remaining in the penalty to Moeller. Now it's Starkov in across the line. Starkoff tried to go rink wide to Trukno and it was broken up and brought out to center ice and fired down the ice by Moeller. Don, Troy, Troy Murray certainly doing an excellent job out there. Loves to hit. Put two players out of this tournament already. And the one thing is Gary took us 30 seconds at his job and now we've got a minute left in the penalty. And the Canadian team in the center ice area doing a good job of killing it off and Morrison who scored the second goal for the Canadian team as it bounced off his stick over the boards and out of play. Well, the Soviets got off to a successful start as they waxed West Germany 12-3. However, they ran into a hot Czechoslovakian team in their second encounter. Canada, of course, with victories over Finland and Sweden. The United States, after losing to Czechoslovakia in the opener, defeated West Germany in their second game. And tomorrow at the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, the Canadian team will face the United States team. Sweden, the defending champion in this tournament. A single round-robin tournament, remember. Semenov takes the pass in across the line. Semenov controlling it, playing it back to the point. Moving right in, the shot, the save by Moffat. Out in front, and it's cleared away by Nyland and down the ice. The Irikov had moved right into the slot, but Moffat stood his ground and took the shot away from him. Now it's Semenov again, starting out for the Soviets. Semenov tried to go over on the left wing. It was broken up by Team Canada and dumped to the neutral zone with 10 seconds remaining in the penalty. Really only one good scoring chance for the Soviets with this man advantage, and that was by Tyurikov just a moment ago. Now the Canadian team is back at full strength. Lead pass for Semenov too far. It goes into the center ice area. And the Soviets regain possession. Pass over on the wing for Kushin. Kushin drops it for Semenov. Back to the line. Shot! It hit the post. Off the stick of Belov. It whistled off the post and just dumped down the ice. A race for it. Moeller into the Soviet ball. And a penalty going to be charged against the Soviets as Moeller was dumped as the Canadian team tries to control it in the Soviet zone. And finally, as it's touched by a Soviet player, the play is whistled down and the penalty is coming up against... Team USSR. Anna Polish Semenov played with the Soviets in the 1981 Canada Cup, and he's going to be a real star in international competition. Uh, we feel that he could play on any club today in the National Hockey League. He's a great talent, handles the puck well in that last shift to see how uh, pretty good hockey player he is. But he also takes a penalty, which the Soviets have laid on the body also, Don, and number 11, Kushin, in that last check, he he hit young Morrison pretty good. A double penalty to the Soviet Union. Kushin is going off and Semenov going off. 
Well, this is going to be a great opportunity for Team Canada with the Soviets two men short. Well, when number 11 Kushin came in there, that was that second hit. And uh, I thought he was getting the penalty to start with. The number 22. So Team Canada with a two-man advantage. Garth Butcher in the center ice area. For Moeller, it goes off his skates into the Soviet zone. It's cleared down the ice. Two minutes for charging. The charging penalty against Kushin after the initial call against Semenov. Pass over on the right side. Muller out front. Habshide fired it wide. Habshide trying to center it again. Team Canada in possession. Out front. There's nobody there. And the Soviets dump it down the ice. A race for it. Going back after it is Butcher. He just beat the Soviet player to the puck. Now Muller chokes it loose. Habshide racing in with Arneal. Habshide for Arneal and he couldn't get a stick on it. Arneal plays it back to the line. Boutillier's shot is high off the glass. Now the Soviets dump it down the ice with 109 remaining in the penalties to the Soviet players. Now it's brought in by Moeller. Drop pass for his brother. He fires it back in behind the goal. Half side for the Canadian team for Arneal. Arneal along the boards. Arneal back of the net for Habshide. Habshide controlling it for the Canadian team. Habshide plays it back to the line for Butcher. Butcher moving into the slot area for Moeller. Moeller moving in. Right out in front. And Arneal was tied up. He couldn't get his shot away as Tierikov did a good job of tying up Scott Arneal. And finally it's deflected over the boards and out of play with 33 seconds remaining in the penalties. We're going to take a look here at Don, that player out there that certainly set up almost all uh, Wayne Gretzky style behind the net, Mark Habscheid. Mark is from the Saskatoon Blades. He was, he was selected by Edmonton in the sixth round. Well, Last perhaps year. in the few games, Gary, that he played with Edmonton this year, he developed some of the habits of Wayne Gretzky, and why not? He's the most successful player in pro hockey today, but he does go back of the net quite often when he has possession of that puck trying to set up the play from behind the goal. 17 seconds remaining in the penalty. Kerry Wilson in across the line. Wilson goes to the corner, trying to center it, and it's intercepted by Priyakin. To the line, kept in by Patrick. Patrick moving in from the point, shot, and it's deflected wide by Salomon. Kept in by Kluzak from the corner. The big defenseman raced in. The Soviets back at full strength. Kluzak falls in the corner. And the Soviets withstand that threat by the Canadian team with a two-man advantage. That's great, Don. That's a difficult situation to have a two-man advantage and not get a goal. We're looking at a pretty interesting hockey player out there right now, Kerry Wilson. Played at Dartmouth College and, and practicing medicine right now in Finland in Helsinki. And we got a close-up on him. He's a local boy here from Winnipeg also. He has a brother playing junior hockey with the Winnipeg Warriors. And of course, when you go back a few years, his father was involved with the Winnipeg Jets in an executive capacity when they were still in the World Hockey Association. Now coming out of his own zone, Karashev for the Soviet Union. Pass over on the wing to Shapitsin. He lost it at the line, and Murray bangs it off the boards to center ice. Kurashev, lead pass too far for Russian, dumped back into the Soviet zone, then played into the center ice area again. Over on the white, uh, left side for Yashin. Yashin working into the corner. He's neatly tied up by Muller. And the Canadian team bring it out to center ice. LeMay trying to poke it free at the line. It goes loose and Ryu circles in the neutral zone. Back to Muller. Jumped ahead for LeMay, racing into the corner as well as Ryu. Ryu back to LeMay. LeMay moving up front, a shot! And the save by Samoa. Along the boards, Troy Murray trying to kick it free. It goes to Zeloff, back of the net. Ryu takes the Soviet player in against the boards. Then they jam away and finally tie it up for a face-off. There's one player out there right now coming into a draft here, Pierre Ryu, the Shawinigan Paul Cataracts. Thanks for running the set for the Quebec Major Junior, and it's had a very good tournament, they tell us so far. The Canadian team and the Czechs tied for the lead, and that showdown battle, one of the final games of the tournament between Canada and Czechoslovakia, could very well decide the gold medal. The face-off in the Soviet zone to the right of Samalov. Brought out now by Trucknow. 
Pass over on the wing to Starkoff. He's knocked over. The puck slides into the Canadian zone. Butcher takes the back of the goal, clearing it up along the boards. Eakin having some problems trying to get out of there against Biakin. Finally, it's cleared to center ice. 4.36 is the time remaining in the first period. It's 2-0. Team Canada leading the Soviet Union in this World Junior Tournament in Winnipeg. Now it's Trucknow working in across the line. The puck goes loose. And... Kodiasov almost got a stick on it at the side of the net. The puck still loose in the Canadian zone as Team Canada is having a little difficulty in clearing it. Finally, they dump it back into the Soviet zone with 4-12 remaining in this opening period. 2-0, the Canadian team leading. Trutno dodges a check as he gets it ahead to Starkov. In across the line to Kodiasov, his shot and the save. Another shot from a sharp angle went wide of the goal and it's picked up along the board by Morrison. Morrison dumps it ahead into the center ice area. It bounces back into the Soviet zone and going back for it is Biakin. Biakin a pass to Vasiliev. Vasiliev is forced back into his own zone by Ekin. Now the Soviets start out, but it's kept in at the line by Habshide and then dumped down the ice as the Soviets again regain control. The Canadian team fires it right back with 331 remaining in this first period. Now it's Vasiliev, a long shot that is bluffed by Moffat. He drops it at the side of the net for Patrick. Patrick spins around as he takes the check and fires it to the other side, and it's cleared down the ice. Going back after it is Tiurikov into his own zone to Semenov. Pass on the wing to Stelnov. Stelnov circles back of his own net, starting out on the right side. Firing it into the Canadian zone. Kushin racing in from the point, trying to keep it in there. Patrick fighting with him for the puck. Finally, it's pulled free. Vasiliev goes back of the goal. Having difficulties there with Patrick, but still manages to come up with it. Vasiliev back to the line to Stelnov. His shot kicked out in front. Another shot. They fire it wide. And Semenov set up Kushin at the side of the net. And he had difficulty controlling that bouncing puck. He had a wide open net to shoot at. However, he fired it wide. Back into the Soviet zone with 225 left in this opening period, and it's fired over the boards and out of play by the Soviets. Well, Don, you can thank your lucky stars for that one for Canada. Of course, uh, so blatant to say you can't go hunting without a gun. Here's a Can Canadian player playing out there without a stick and put the puck right on Semenov's stick, and he passed over to Kushan and. Uh, luckily for young Moff, but that puck went behind him and out the other side. Don, that was one of the few times that you have so far seen Moffat down off of his feet. He's an excellent stand-up goaltender and certainly a good selection for playing the Russians today. The face-off in the Soviet zone, back to the line. Moeller with a shot, it goes wide. Racing in from the point is Nyland. He takes a shot, it's right on and just slides past the far post. As the Soviet goaltender Samolov had difficulty controlling it, and it almost slid into the far corner. Now Stepa clears it to center ice. Nyland is back for Team Canada. On the wing for Moeller. It slides loose into the Soviet zone. Priyakin dumps it back out to center ice, and the Canadian team with Randy Moeller controlling regroup and then fired in with 149 remaining in this first period. It's loose behind the goal. Picked up by Morrison. Morrison. Back of the net to the other side for Kerry Wilson. Wilson is taken in against the boards by Priyakin. And the puck finally picked up by Kudayasov into the center ice area. Kudayasov takes a shot off the leg of Nyland. And Moeller clears it to the board. Both to the line. Here's a chance for Team Canada. Lead pass intended for Morrison too far. And as Beloff goes back and touches it, icing is called against Team Canada. Well, let's find out what we'll have between Perry. The face off to the left of Moffat in goal for Team Canada. Back to the line, a quick shot by Shapitzen, and it just went wide. Now Ryu against the boards, finally dumps it to center ice. The Soviets wait for their teammates to get on side, then it's fired back in. Along the boards, as we move into the final minute of the period, it's poke free for Murray. Murray is taken out of the play by Biakin, and the Soviet player Belov goes back of his own net. Into the center ice area. Now it's brought back in by Boutillier. Boutillier racing for the goal. He was tied up, managed to slide the puck to the goal mouth. Salomov stood his ground. Now it's loose back of the net. LeMay tried to kick it to the 
Winger, Murray, he couldn't get a shot away as it's brought back out by Biakin. Biakin into the slot, the shot, the rebound, and it's cleared to center ice. Just off the stick of LeMay as he was spun around and couldn't gain control. It slides into the Soviet zone. In back of the net, Ryu trying to feed it out front, and it's picked off the boards by Kalazov. Kalazov up on the wing for Russian. He loses it in the center ice area. Now Yashin for the Soviets. In across the line. Yashin still controlling it. He couldn't get a shot away as he was knocked down by Boutillier. And with one second remaining in the period, Boutillier holds it against the board for a faceoff. Outstanding period by Canada, Don. They, they forechecked well. They played the body well. And very few chances they've given up to score on their goal. 2-0, the Canadian team leads it. Goals by Eakin and Morrison at 3.40 and 7.58. Well, you see the Soviet players, at least those on the bench, heading for the dressing room. But there is still one second remaining in the period, and the face-off will take place to the right of Mike Moffat. They have to be different, Don. <laughs> Face-off, Semenov banged away at it, but the siren sounds, and it's 2-0 Team Canada. And Fergie, I think everyone watching this afternoon would have to agree, a strong first period by Team Canada. Absolutely, and held their composure quite well. No one necessarily understand why. I mean, they are facing some very talented national teams from the other side of the pond. Well, as you said, Don, it's been custom that we have been sending over club teams. It's, it's a very difficult thing in order to organize a national hockey club. You don't really get the, the opportunity to have the players too long, and putting together a team, even when you bring them together for a couple weeks during the summer, is difficult because as the National Hockey League has taken so many underage players, I think we'll take a look at a little bit later the number of players that could be eligible for this team, which speaking about one of Fergie's players, Dale Howardchuk, and many others, could be a real dynamite hockey club. Something I want to like to get corrected, Don, is who scored that goal? I thought it was Mark Morrison. We've been told it was Dave Morrison who scored that goal. I thought it was Mark Morrison. Mark Morrison was the man who scored the goal for the uh, Canadian team. The second goal, Bruce Eakin got the first. And in goal for the Canadian team, Mike Moffat. Now, Don Cherry seemed to feel that he was giving up too many rebounds. What's your opinion? That's quite true. That puck got away from him once. Uh, uh, the young defenseman Patrick gave up a rebound there once, and Semenov made that gray over, good play over to Kushin and put the puck behind Moffat. But uh, you're, you know, one thing about the Soviets, they'll try you one on one, and if you're heading for the net, you get that rebound that's coming loose, they'll put it in. Well, Mike Moffat in goal for his second appearance in this tournament. He backstopped the Canadian team to a 5-1 victory over Finland in the tournament opener. Scott Arneal. Playing on the left side with Hapshide and Mike Muller, the number one line for the Canadian team. He has played a number of games already this season with the Winnipeg Jets, and I think will probably be called up again by the parent National Hockey League team. In goal for the Soviet Union, Vitaly Samalov. Samalov with some good saves in that opening 20 minutes. The Canadians outshot the Soviets by a margin of 11 to 8. Now the Soviets at their own line. Stelnov forced back into his own zone. Over for Moeller to Arneal. He deflected it wide. Good forechecking by the Canadian team resulted in another chance in the opening seconds of this second period. Finally, it's brought out by Vasiliev on the wing. Vasiliev working in on the right side, still controlling it. In the slot, Kuzin couldn't get a shot away in the Canadian start back. Now it's Moeller in across the line. Rubbed out against the boards and going back to his own goal is Stelnoff. Stelnoff, long lead pass for Kushin. Kushin in across the Canadian line, trying to go around the defenseman Boutelier. It goes loose, and Stelnoff centered it, but Vasiliev couldn't get a stick on it. And as the Soviets try and play it back to the point, it slides all the way down the ice. Play just underway. We've gone through one minute of this opening period. The Canadians there, the second period, the Canadians leading by a score of 2-0. The puck loose in the Soviet zone. It's Russian going back of his own goal for Kudayasov. Now Kudayasov tries to come out the other side. He's being pressured by Ryu. It goes loose behind the net. Murray trying to feed it in front, and it deflected off a leg to the corner. 
Now finally dumped to center ice where Roshan picks it up for the Soviets over on the wing to Kadyasov. Kadyasov moving into the slot, shoots, and it's just wide of the goal. Chapitsen is taken in against the boards by Murray. They jam away in the corner and finally Kluzak comes up with it. Kluzak up along the boards for Murray. And they hold it against the boards for the faceoff. Down the Canadian team looking a, a little weary in their own end zone just in that particular shift out there a little bit too long. We're looking at Mo Lamea, an Ottawa junior. Talk about improvement over the course of the year. Last year, Mo Lamea's statistics were 32 goals and 45 assists as 63 games. This, this year, 31 goals and 34 assists in 33 games. We're taking a look at that last shot here. Just deflected wide as Kadyasov had moved into the slot. Another face-off coming up inside the Canadian zone. Now Morrison is waved out of the circle. Eakin steps in. And Sear for Team Canada dumps it down the ice. Good check as Morrison was hit by Biakin. But it's going to produce a penalty to the Soviets. Feared as though he may have had his stick up a little high in stepping into Morrison. Well, his elbow came up too. And pretty good check, I thought. Here's a replay of it now. Here's all these. The Soviets have to a good check. I think that's a good body check, Don. I didn't think it should have produced a penalty, but Biakin goes to the penalty box. That's where you hit him. Center ice. Interference, the call. And now in the center ice area, it's Kluzak in across the line, firing at back of the net. Meloff along the board, unable to get out. Morrison goes behind the goal. Morrison up front, they score on the steer! Now we're gonna take, we're gonna take a look at, at this, this third goal, Mark Morrison behind the net. Right out to Paul Sear. Took no time whatsoever, he just saw that open side, put it right in. He's <laughs> gonna look at it from another angle here. Setting up behind the net on a power play. I wonder who started that. Or Wayne Gretzky has been so popular at doing it, been so successful. Many teams are, are setting up that fashion. Then two round in combination there, Mark Morris and the Paul here. And it's 3 nothing for Team Canada as we return to live action. And in the Soviet zone, Samoloff is forced to hold it for a face-off. Our play goal as Sear was set up beautifully in front by Mark Morrison. The goal coming at 2.15 and it's 3-0 for Team Canada. The face off to the right of Samoloff. From the draw, picked up by Streeby. Streeby at the side of the net. And the Canadian player, Dave Morrison, was tied up and unable to get a shot away. Now it's Vasiliev working to the corner. Going back of the net, he's taken out of the play by Nyland. Dumped up along the board. Dave Morrison unable to get it out. The Soviets keep it in, but a centering pass is knocked down, and it's brought out by Wilson. Wilson now. Back to Nyland. Nyland dumps it ahead for Mer uh, Wilson. Wilson cutting for the goal. He tried to slide it in front to Dave Morrison, cutting from the other side, and it was just a little too far for him. Now it's Vasiliev to Semenov. Semenov at the line, knocked off the puck by Nyland. And the defenseman brings it back. His pass knocked down. Streeby manages to pick it up, brings it in across the line. He's taken in against the board. And we have a penalty coming up against the Soviets again. Tierikov took the Canadian player in against the boards. From the Winnipeg Arena, this is away with the Canadian team enjoying a man advantage. They were successful the last time. Here's Morrison, a pass for Sear. Going in. He shoots just wide. As Sabalov stood his ground. And Sear fired it wide. A great opportunity for Team Canada to increase its lead. Sear who had scored the third goal in this period. He runs into a check at the line from Priyakin. 
And the Canadian team has to regroup, and Sear appears to be injured. Now in across the line, it's Eakin firing it in, but it's offside, and Sear took quite a check from Priyakin at the line, and he has gone to the Team Canada bench. Priyakin got his knee out pretty good there, and he caught Sear real good. Come, come across the blue line. Well, Sear had a great opportunity as he was sent in by Morrison to make it 4-0. 125, the time left in the penalty to Triukov. Now back at the Soviet goal, cleared to the line, kept in by Kluzak. Kluzak feeds it into the corner. Arneal having difficulty controlling it. Comes back to the line, kept in there by Kluzak. Kluzak over to the other side, to Moeller at the side, and then up front of Arneal! Set up perfectly at the side of the net, and he could not get his stick on it. Now it's Moeller moving into the goal area. Finally, it's knocked off his stick and taken back at the net by Biakin. Another great opportunity for Team Canada. And the Soviets are having difficulty getting it out of their own zone. They clear it to the line and finally get it out to center ice. Here's a chance. Trakno in across the line. He dropped it. There was nobody there. And Moeller comes back to Habshide. He's got Arneal with him. Habshide going right in. He went in too far. And he fired it wide. Now it's picked up by Moeller. Back to the line for Patrick. At the side of the net. Habshide tried to uh, flip it back to Moeller. It was intercepted by the Soviet player, and it goes back of the Soviet goal. The Canadian team applying pressure with this man advantage. 15 seconds left in the penalty. And the faceoff will take place in the Soviet zone as Kalazov is down on the ice. Scott Arneal was set up beautifully and couldn't control that bouncing puck. Well, that's quite true, Don. You know, many people have asked me, is Scott Arneal coming up after the tournament? Well, there's one good reason why you don't want to rush a young fella. He should have put that puck behind the goaltender, and when they're ready, they'll be up. And a uh, situation like that, you come and bring them into the National League, and you miss opportunities like that. You can't afford to do that in the National Hockey League. Kalazov, who fell in the corner, going to the bench. Nyland, playing it in back of the net. Ryu for Team Canada. Now to Murray, back to the line to Nyland. His shot right on, and the rebound is fired off the boards and down the ice as the penalty expires. The Canadian team applying good pressure with that man advantage, Gary. Well, Don, they're setting up exactly as Dave King had wanted them to, but only scoring one power play thus far. I imagine Dave's a, a little frustrated, even though they had some good opportunities. What he wants them to do, he wants them to set up on the outside of, of the Soviet's box. He wants them to utilize pass on the perimeters, try to feed it back to the defense and let him move into the middle and try to, to get into through the box just as the defense was moving in the middle of the ice to get his shot off. Now at the side of the net, it's Kurashev up along the boards to Kodiasov. The Soviets having problems getting out of their own zone with that tough forechecking of Team Canada. Finally, it's brought in Russian shot and it's gloved and held by Moffat. Now he puts it back of the goal for LeMay. Off the boards for Ryu, into the center ice area. Troy Murray, the Team Canada captain, going right in, but in stick handling at the line, he put himself offside. That's a good play by Troy Murray. Daniel Ray, or Pierre Ryu just went offside on the, on the right side, but it was a good heads-up play by Murray. And he can beat you. He does that in college one-on-one. -on -one, and He's a good stick handler, four checks well, and good skater. Here's an example of his point production right now in college. 28 points in 16 games at UOP. Strebe flips it into the Soviet zone. It's cleared to the line. Right out to center ice. A long shot sails high up over the glass and out of play as Igor Stelnov let that blast go from the blue line. Don, what the Canadians are doing extremely well is standing up and holding that blue line. They know that the Soviets like to carry that puck into their zone. They don't like to fire it in too often and dig away in those corners. Dave Morrison, he's a good, good player to stand up in that blue line and run that interference on the Soviet wings. Kerry Wilson steals the puck at center ice, tried to feed Morrison on the right side, and it was broken up by the Soviets. 
Boutillier back into his own zone. Over for Butcher. Butcher lost it. Here's Cushion. Cushion cutting from the corner. Had it poked away by Butcher. It goes loose at the other side. Vasiliev tried to center it, but Kerry Wilson was there to cover up. Wilson in the center ice area spun around by Vasiliev, and the Soviets gain control again with Semenov. Over on the wing for Kushin. Kushin. Back to Semenov. Semenov controlling it in the corner to the point. Stelnov took a shot, and it was knocked down, and the Canadian team dump it to center ice. Now back into his own zone to Yurikov, to Stelnov. Off the boards, it's deflected. Knocked down there by Butcher. He shoots it back into the Soviet zone. Now coming out of his own zone, Semenov almost overskated it with Wilson coming in trying to pick up that loose puck. The Soviets again having difficulties against this forechecking in their own zone. 12.41, the time remaining in this second period. 3-0. The Canadian national junior team is leading as Kushin starts out. In across the Canadian line. Kushin taken in against the boards. The puck goes loose and Sear brings it back. Sear for Team Canada has his pass knocked down. Trukno for the Soviets in across the line, but it's whistled down on the offside. The Soviets are starting to throw the puck around a lot more. More of a Soviet style of game right now. They're not, they don't usually go into that heavy checking that, that they were doing in the first period. Now they're throwing the puck around. Puck around. Simonov was brilliant in that last series of plays. Pays off just outside the Canadian line. Biakin fires it in off the boards. Kuzak, back of his own net. Priakin feeds it out front. Trukno trying to get his stick on it. They jam away, and finally it's sent out. Here's Eakin, who scored the first Canadian goal. He's taken in against the board. Maintains control for Sear, and Sear at a sharp angle. Didn't have anything to shoot at, and Samoloff just stood his ground. Now the Soviets lose it at the Canadian line. Here's a chance again for Eakin. Eakin has spun around in the center ice area. The puck goes loose. Eakin fights for it again for Sear. Back to Eakin. Eakin working to the corner, trying to play it back to the point. Trukno couldn't get out, and the long shot taken by Sear. Eakin falls as he tripped over the Soviet goaltender. The Canadian team applying pressure again. Another shot goes wide. Eakin out front. Morrison spins around. And Samoloff kicked that one out. Now it's Trukno in his own zone. Finally gets it over to Kalisov. Kalisov, long shot. It deflects over the glass and out of play. Good pressure again by the Canadian team. That line of Paul Sear, Mark Morrison, and Bruce Eakin gone, just putting on excellent pressure down there. Just goes to show exactly what Bob Strum was saying, that they weren't looking for all necessarily great stars. What they were trying to do is get come up with some balanced lines. Eakin was really just an addition to this hockey club. Just hustling out there, digging up that puck. Excellent opportunities on that particular ship. Now it's Moeller going back into his own zone. Moeller, lead pass into the center ice area, picked up by Hapshide for Arneal. Arneal going for the goal up front, and Hapshide deflected it, but a good leg save by the Soviet goaltender. Now it's picked up along the board by Roshan. He dodges the check. Chapitsen gets it out into the center ice area. Kodiasov across the line. Corey Ross on a shot. Good save by Moffat. Moffat's best save of the hockey game as he came to the short side to take it away from Russian. It's fired down the ice and right on goal, no icing. Super save by Mike Moffat on Russian. Scott O'Neill left his wing. Right winger walked right in and had a good shot on Moffat. Now it's Vasiliev moving in. A shot to save. The rebound picked up in the corner by Shapitsen. He is tied up. Moeller clears it up along the boards to his brother, and Mike fires it down the ice. We've reached the midway point of the second period. The Canadian national team leading by a score of 3-0. They have squandered some good scoring opportunities here in the second period, or they could be ahead by at least a couple more. At the Soviet line, Kushin for Vasiliev. Vasiliev fanned on his shot. It's brought in now by Stelnov. The puck lays at the line, and as it's touched by the Soviets, the offside whistle finally goes. Don, we see number 10, Garth Butcher, out there, just on the, the lighter side of things. Sherry Baston, 
Bob Strum really encouraged their players to kind of get together. Their new attitude was important. They asked each other to exchange Christmas gifts over the past day. The players gave Garth Butcher a, a big stuffed gorilla with his name <laughs> on the back of it. I, I, they, they call him the gorilla. Sometimes he represents that. In the center ice area, Murray has it poked away from him by Semenov. Kushin over on the far wing trying to keep it in, but it's dumped to center ice. And going back after it is Tierkov to Vasiliev. He tried to go rink wide for Stelnov. Stelnov played it off the boards, but again, the Soviets having difficulty organizing attack in the face of some tremendous forechecking by this Canadian team. Now it's Kushin into the center ice area to Tierkov. In across the line, trying to go for the goal, he is tied up, and the play is whistled down in the Canadian zone, and I think a penalty is coming up here against Team Canada. Mola May, an unnecessary interference penalty. Well, the Soviet Union, the gold medalists in all previous World Junior Championships, Sweden, the defending champion, and they were beaten on Wednesday night 3-2 by Team Canada here in the Winnipeg Arena. An interference call against Mola May. However, the Soviet Union is going to be hard-pressed to uh, win that gold medal again, particularly if they don't soon alter the score in this particular contest because they have already lost a game 3-2 to Czechoslovakia. And it's a straight round-robin tournament. The forechecking of Ekin as he uh, forces Tierkov to lose control of the puck and the Soviets have to go back into their own zone to regroup. Semenov working from the corner trying to get it over to Belov. They pass into the center ice area knocked away by the Canadians and the Canadians just waiting killing off those seconds before firing it down the ice. Now it's Morrison picking it up in the corner. Morrison trying to feed it out front and finally the Soviets start back. Pass on the right side for Vasiliev in across the line to Semenov. Shot saved by Moffat, and he hangs on for the whistle. Great save by Moffat. He's just been outstanding this game. A good shot by Semenov. He will pick it up in the replay. A good play by Vasiliev. He drops it over to Semenov, and Semenov has enough room. Good save by Moffat. Comes out to cut the angle down and does not let the rebound go. Well, if he was having some problems with the rebounds in the first period, he has certainly corrected his style here in the second. The shots on goal, 20 to 13 in favor of Team Canada. Butcher clears it along the boards, but not out. It's kept in by Biakin. Biakin racing in from the point. The puck is loose. Back to the line. A shot deflects off the skate to the corner. Biakin is taken in against the board. Starkov comes in. He gets it back to the line to Kalazov. His shot just wide. It whistles off the board. Biakin takes the shot off the glass. The Soviets with the man advantage in controlling things. Here's Kalazov trying to move in at the side of the net. It was deflected wide. And finally it's cleared off the board. Here's a break for Muller. Muller going in. He shoots it wide off the glass. As he had the breakaway with 32 seconds remaining. Mike Muller has real good period so far. Here he comes in off the right wing, cuts to the center. So what he should be doing, gets himself so he can shoot all four parts of the net, but puts it over the top of the goal. And the, here's another one, another look at it from a different angle. But a good move by Mike Muller, but fortunately threw over the top of the net. So the score remains, Canada 3, the Soviet Union nothing, with 32 seconds left in the penalty to Mo LeMay, the face-off in the Soviet zone to the right of Samoloff. Along the boards, it's Shapitsyn. He goes rink-wide to Kodiasov. Russian dodges a check in the corner from Nyland. And they uh, flip it up along the boards, but icing is called against the Soviet team. Nyland has played a very strong tournament, in the opinion of Dave King, the coach. Don, he's going to be a very high draft. Uh, he was not drafted before because of his age, of course, and 
because he is going to be a very high draft this year in the amateur draft in June. Plays the Portland Winter Hawks, and there's not too many big 6'4 defensemen around. That uh, He's going to be a real good one, Don. He's very young. An 18-year-old native of Vancouver, Gary Nyland, one of the top players for this Canadian team. He is currently out there on defense with Randy Moeller with 10 seconds remaining in the penalty. And the Canadian team, after surviving some anxious moments in the early seconds of this penalty, now doing a pretty effective job, and they are back at full strength as LeMay comes out of the penalty box. In across the line, Shapitzen's shot goes off a leg. In the corner, it's Kerry Wilson. Wilson, working up to the line, lost it at the line. And Nyland, following up on the play, dumped it to center ice. Now it's Beloff. Back to his own line, forced to Shapitzen. He dodges one check, the puck goes loose, and the Canadian team goes back into its own zone to regroup. Off the boards for Dave Morrison, for Wilson. Wilson moving into the slot. He was knocked over, and the loose puck brought out by the Soviets. Shapitzen dodges a check, tried to feed it on the left wing, too far for Kadiasov. And as it's touched by the Canadian team, icing is called against the Soviets. Well, let's test your hockey knowledge. In the last decade, only four players have been on teams that have won both the Memorial Cup, emblematic of junior hockey supremacy in this country, and the Stanley Cup, the prize in the National Hockey League. Only four players. Who are they? I'll give you a clue. I drafted one of them. <laughs> Is he still playing for you? No, he's not. Okay, that's another tip. I want to know, Don, am I old enough to answer that question? I think you are. I think you are, <laughs> Gary. Here's a chance for Team Canada. Reuse shot. And the rebound flipped at the net by Murray. The save by Samalov. Kept in by LeMay. His shot. A glove save by Samalov. He had to do the splits to get that one. Now it's Murray in the corner trying to move out front. They jam away at it at the side of the net. The puck goes loose. Back to the line. Murray manages to keep it in. LeMay goes behind the goal. Fed it out front. There was nobody there. And the Soviets bring it back. Semenov overskated it. And LeMay pokes it back into the Soviet zone with 547 remaining in this second period. Back to the line for Patrick. Patrick tried to play it to the side of the net. It goes loose out front for Ryu. His shot deflected wide. Again, some good hitting in that Soviet zone as Vasiliev and Murray bumped, and finally LeMay comes in, and they hold it against the boards for a face-off. This line all around that Soviet goal. They, they've had a very good two period. Here's a replay of the last flurry, and LeMay's digging it out. Now watch this shit chance here by Rayu. Troy Murray, now he four checks. He bumps in the corner. He just had an outstanding tournament, like Dave King said this morning. He has been his best forward so far. Dave King from the University of Saskatchewan coaching this Canadian national junior team and doing a tremendous job with these youngsters. Muller from the faceoff, quick shot, glove save by Samoloff. I think uh, it may have gone wide even had he not grabbed it, but it looked spectacular just the same. You'll catch a look at it, Don, and good shot by Muller off the faceoff. Good save, may have gone wide, but a quick glove hand. Now Viakin in his own zone is spun around. Rink-wide pass. You don't see the Soviets do that too often in their own zone. Throw it across the ice. However, they got away with it that time. Now it's Butcher. Off the boards, trying to get it out as the Soviets are applying some pressure here. The puck loose along the board. Butcher finally plays it off the board, back into the Soviet zone as Kalazov goes back after it. Boutillier intercepts the pass in the center ice area. Knocked down by Priyakin. Priyakin couldn't go anywhere with it. Now Kalazov will try his luck. He loses it to Habscheid. Habscheid going in. Trying to feed it out front for Moeller. Habscheid gets it again for Scott O'Neill and he pokes it wide. This line has had some excellent scoring chances, but so far have been shut out. Now it's Butcher off the board into the Soviet zone. Kalazov goes into the corner. He's taken in against the boards by Arneal, and they hold it for a face-off. Live on CBC, this is World Junior Hockey from Winnipeg. Kuchin and Vasiliev for the Soviets. Half shot is between Moeller and Arneal. Back to the line, it's Stelna. 
In across the Canadian line, dumped back out to center ice, a race for the puck. The Soviet player got there and to the line. Over on the left wing now to Kushin. Kushin trying to set things up, takes the shot, and the rebound is picked off by Arneal and dumped off the board to center ice. Now it's Vasiliev forced back into his own zone. Working out against Havshide, gets it ahead for Semenov. In across the line, Semenov dumping it to the corner. Butcher goes in there, gets to it ahead of Kushin. Ahead for Mike Moeller, he deflects it. Out to center ice, it's fired back in, offside. And the faceoff will take place outside the Canadian line. Well, we're getting a close-up view of Volumir Durakov, one of the highly regarded defensemen in the Soviet Union for junior competition. And number four is a good one, left-handed shot. And handles the puck extremely well, good lead passes, and uh, he's played well for them so far in this tournament. One thing the Canadian team I don't think can do in this third period is go into a defensive uh, style of play. They have to continue with the same aggressive forechecking play that carried them to the 3-0 lead, I would think. They've got to do what got them the 3-0 lead in the first two periods. They can't afford to go back into a defensive shell. Now it's Ryu out of his own zone. He goes rink wide for LeMay and across the line. LeMay tried to play it to the corner. It was intercepted by Shapitson and dumped to center ice. The Canadian team reorganized with Patrick shooting it back in. Along the boards, Ryu trying to poke it out. It goes loose for LeMay. LeMay feeds it in front. There's nobody there. It comes back to the line, and the Soviet player tried to get out. That was Shapitsa, but he was hammered by Patrick. And it's brought back by Murray at the line. LeMay steals it now, trying to feed it in front. And Shapitskin coming back. Gets the puck for the Soviets. A long lead pass for Yashin in the center ice area. Knocked down by Patrick. They jam in against the board. Spoke free by Ryu for Murray. He had it knocked off his stick. Murray goes to the corner, centered it, and it was deflected down the ice by Samoloff, the goaltender. Now it's Randy Moeller into the center ice area for Eakin. A back pass just behind Morrison. Dumped back to center ice. Circling in the center ice area is Sear back to his own line. It's Randy Moeller off the boards now for Eakin. Eakin brings it in. It's dumped back out by the Soviet. Now on the right side, here's Kadiasov at the line. He has it taken away, and it's flipped down the ice by Sear. Racing back after it is Kalizov. Kalizov up on the left side. The Soviets dump it down the ice, and Nalan goes back for Team Canada. 17-33 remaining in the third period. Canada leading 3-0. The Soviets managed to keep it in the Canadian zone, then it's broken up and shot down the ice. Galazov goes behind his own goal up along the boards for Starkov. Starkov, rink wide for Kadiasov. His pass knocked down by Sear, and he simply dumps it down the ice. A race for the puck, and Kurashev got back there first. It's loose at center ice again. Sear brings it in for Canada. He tried to slide it to Eakin, and it's intercepted by Biakin. Right side, Vasiliev. Vasiliev still with it, takes a shot, rebound, and it's cleared by Sear. In back of the goal, Carey loses it to Vasiliev. He posts it to Kushin. Kushin then is knocked down, and it's dumped to center ice by Moeller. Now in the center ice area, Strebe. For Wilson, Wilson gets around one man in across the line, working towards the corner, tried to center it, but it was knocked down by the Soviets, and they bring it to the line. Kushin over on the far side for Sirikov, into the center ice area. Now it's picked up by Morrison, Morrison in across the line for Wilson, he couldn't get a shot away. Wilson trying to control it as it bounces off his stick, and the Soviets Kushin is forced back into his own zone. Semenov going back of his own goal. 15.58, the time left in this third period. Broken up by Dave Morrison. He gets it over for Streeby. Streeby to Wilson, and a quick shot was saved by Samilov. Now it's brought back by the Soviets. Roshan at the line. He was stopped. Now trying his hand. Stelov, he fired it wide. Back to the point for Semenov. He dumps it into the corner. Kushin. From the corner, trying to feed it to the point for Ross, and it hopped over his stick to center ice. 
Belknap back into his own zone. 15-25 as the Soviets make a change. The time remaining in the third period. Canada leading 3-0. Shapitsin weaving his way out to the Canadian line, but the Soviets are whistled down on the offside. Well, we've talked about players of junior age playing in the National Hockey League, about members of this team who have been drafted, and those are the four players on the Team Canada roster who have not yet been drafted. But as Fergie pointed out earlier, Gary Nyland, the big defenseman from Portland, Gord Kluzak, another big rear guard, They'll likely go high in the first round. Well, they certainly will, Don, all four. Of course, Pierre Rayou, uh, Quebec Major Junior Hill, also go high. He's a sniper. And Paul Sear, the other who has not been drafted, he has scored a goal in this game. In the second period, he made it 3-0 for Canada. Here's Habshide. He belongs to Edmonton. Stopped at the line. Scott Arneal, who will play with the Winnipeg Jets, feeds it back to the point. Now it's Russian starting out as the Soviets bring it in across the line. Good play by Kluzak. He took Russian in against the boards. It's dumped to the line and out to center ice with 14.40 left in this third period. The Soviets fire it into the Canadian zone as it's touched. Icing is called against the Soviet Union. Today's game is coming to you from the Winnipeg Arena. Play underway as the Soviets bring it into the Canadian zone. It's broken up at the line, but Starkov manages to keep it in. Now it's Randy Moeller going into the corner. Good body check as he knocks Kadiasov down. Here comes LeMay. Lead pass for Murray. He's got a breakaway. Murray going in. He shoots. Saved by Samalov. He was just a little off balance as he took that lead pass. But Samalov stood his ground. And now it's cleared down the ice by the Soviets. No icing on the play. It's waved off. Randy Muller goes back at his own goal. He's played a strong game back in defense for the Canadian team. Here's Murray in across the line. Lead pass, but LeMay was offside. Good play by Troy Murray. And here's a good look at the last rush by Troy Murray. University of North Dakota hockey player. Good play. Stick on the ice. Somewhere to pass the puck to, moves right in, and a good save by the Russian goalkeeper. And he didn't know where it was. Three nothing. Team Canada leads. Samalov has made some good saves for the Soviets in this hockey game, and some erratic shooting has also cost the Canadian team, or they could be comfortably in front. Good defensive play there by Sear, as he just got his stick down to knock it away from Vasilyev. Now into the center ice area. Morrison in across the line. Here's a chance for Team Canada. Penalty is coming up. As Eakin was spun around, Sear couldn't get his stick on it. Out front again, and it hopped over the stick of Morrison in front of the goal. And the penalty is coming up against the Soviet Union. Good smart play by Mark Morrison. He puts Sear right in again, and he is a smart little hockey player. Plays the Victoria Cougars, and good draft by New York Rangers. 150 pounder who can play. There's the penalty taken by the Soviets right on the play right in front of the goal. <laughs> Igor Stelnov, the Soviet defenseman, will be sitting out the next two minutes. The Canadian team would like to see him back on the ice a lot sooner than that, however, as they'd like to capitalize on this man advantage situation. The goal here could all but finish the Soviets in this hockey game. The Canadian team looking for its third straight win. Back to the line. Boutillier fakes a shot. In back of the goal for Morrison. No really set power play unit for the Canadian team. As Coach Dave King said, the line that's up is the one that usually goes out. Now it's Morrison controlling it back of the net. To Boutillier, shot right on. The rebound is just jammed wide by Sear. Out front again. To the point now. Boutillier stops it. Scores! set up again by Mark Morrison. He's just done a, an absolutely incredible job behind the net. Setting up plays. It's a, a perfect place to really be unattended. Puts it back to Bottillier. 
Batelli just winds up and, and just drives that puck. Notice again how he moves in about two strides into the center ice area. That's where Dave King wants him to move in. We're, we're seeing it from another angle now. Again, Morrison putting that puck back to Batelier. Batelier moving about three strides into the center ice. Driving it right up in the top corner. Big goal for Team Canada. They're now in front 4-0 with 12.48, the time remaining in the hockey game. They moved that puck around so well. And when we were talking with Coach Dave King, as I mentioned, no really set unit on the power play. They're just going with each and every line. And you know, Don, that's a perfect way to instill real team unity. Well, of course, this Canadian team will be playing with much more confidence if they should come off this one with a victory. Roshan in across the line for Yashin. Yashin moving right into the slot. He couldn't get a shot away as the Canadian team was covering up. Good defensive job by Struby who managed to get back into that slot and tie up the Soviet player. The puck loose in the Soviet zone. Morrison has lost his stick. He tried to kick it to the corner. Picked off by Roshan over on the wing for Yashin. Back to Roshan, moving in, slap shot, and it's blocked up into the stands by Moffat. Great save by Mike Moffat. Good shot by Yashin. That was a super save. Moffat got his glove hand, went up in the top of that corner of the net. Here's Yashin coming down now. Now watch his play. Moves Puzak out of there. Good shot. Now watch his save. Good glove hand save by Mike Moffat. Good angle on that Covered. Mike Moffat in the tournament so far has given up just one goal. That goal scored a shorthanded tally, by the way, by the Soviet Union or by the uh, Finnish national team in the opening game of the tournament as Canada won 5 1. He plays for the Kingston Canadians. He's been drafted by the Boston Bruins. And he shut out the Soviets so far in this contest with 11 53 remaining in the game. It's shot into the Soviet zone as it's touched by Tierkov. Icing is called against Canada. Well, there's action tonight in the National Hockey League. One of the games taking place right here at the Winnipeg Arena, the Chicago Blackhawks. The visitors, the Detroit Red Wings, will be in Toronto, and Los Angeles will be in Vancouver. So we advise you to check your local listings for the game to be televised in your area. It's going to be a busy day here in the Winnipeg Arena, Fergie. You and I are going to be here for the better part of this Boxing Day holiday. <laughs> yes, we are. Catch three games tomorrow in Bloomington, Minnesota. And wherever you're looking in on this Boxing Day, across this nation of ours, we hope that you have had a very happy and safe holiday season. the boards the Canadian team unable to get it out a shot from the point by Belloff and Moffat kicked that one out now a lead pass for Vasiliev he couldn't control it Dierkoff back in his own zone loses it here's a chance right in front as he can try to center it it goes in the corner off and they score half side doing a, a fine job once that puck is, is brought over into the corner. Mark Habside up right up in front of that net. You know, he's had a tough time putting that puck in the net today. He's had plenty of opportunities. Just seemingly a very unselfish hockey player. Again, we're getting a, another look at it. Moeller doing the work in that corner. Habside left all alone out in front of that net. A very poor defensive play by the Soviets. Darkov shoots it in. Moeller and Arneal draw assists on the goal by Habscheid. Flipped in by LeMay. It goes loose in the corner. Taken there by Starkov. Ryu almost stole it at the side of the goal. And the Soviets dump it to center ice. Troy Murray is back to pick up the puck. Now it's Butcher into the center ice area. Looking for Murray too far. It slid into the Soviet zone. Murray takes the Soviet player Kalazov in against the board. The puck goes loose and it's brought out by the Soviets. Kadyasov in across the line, working from the corner. 
trying to feed it out front, and he couldn't control it as he was being tied up by the Canadian defenseman. Now the Soviets get it again. Shepta in the corner, taken in against the boards by Butcher. Out front to Starkov. Quick shot, but another glove save by Moffat. Good save by Moffat again on Starkov, and Starkov is one of the brilliant young players. You will catch him in the replay. Comes into number eight, Starkov, and quick shot. Good glove save again by Mike Moffat. Moffat. Covers up the rebound this time. He kicked a few out back in the slot this third period. Ten nineteen is the time remaining. Five nothing. Team Canada leading the Soviet Union. As Dave King was saying before the game, remember the eight one loss in the Canada Cup. <laughs> They're really taking it out on them today. Now it's Kuzak back of his own net. Just 17 years of age, Puzak, a 6'3", 200-pounder, playing with Billings. In across the line, Eakin tried to poke it to the goal mouse. It was cleared to the board. It goes back to the Soviet goal again. Picked up by Morrison. Morrison, with Patrick moving in from the slot, tried to center it. It comes right across the goal crease. And nobody was there as Yashin brings it out. Yashin in across the line. Having difficulties with Patrick, he's taken in against the boards by Patrick. Kuzak also moves in, and they hold it for a face-off. Just another great shift done by Mark Morrison. He's had an outstanding day today. Here he is behind the net again, and gets it out right in front of the net. Back at it again, gets it across the goal mouth again, and Mark Morrison's had a pretty fair hockey game today. Guy Yashin for the Soviet team appears to have uh, been clipped on the nose in that shoving match in the corner. Another face-off will take place in the Canadian zone as the puck bounces over the glass and out of play with 9.36 left in this third period. 5-0, Canada leading the Soviet Union. The Canadian team with previous victories, 5-1. And 3-2 over Finland and Sweden. Sweden, the defending champion. Back to the line. Stelhoff took a shot, knocked down, and the Canadian team breaks out with Morrison. Lee pass for Wilson. He couldn't quite control it. Wilson feeding it out front. Knocked down by the Soviets. Taken again by the Canadian team. As Streeby managed to steal it, a backhand pass went off Morrison's stick. He goes to the corner. Kerry Wilson also moves into the corner, and they hold it against the boards for another face-off. Good close-up again of Kerry Kerry Wilson, and Kerry Wilson had a strong game of, as well as he did the other night. Fergie, that's not a bad fourth line out there today. Supposedly they've got some special assignments, but they're controlling and holding the play quite well out there. Yes, they dipped right into Finland to pull out Kerry Wilson too. Gary Wilson, a native of Winnipeg, playing with IFK in Helsinki. In the center ice area, the puck is deflected over the boards and out of play. Gary Wilson uh, has also been drafted by the Chicago Blackhawks, and the Blackhawks in town for tonight's game against the Winnipeg Jets, and they have their coaching staff here, and I'm sure they're they're pleased with the efforts of uh, a fellow like Wilson and Murray, just as you are with the work of Scott Arneal, John. Oh, definitely, John, definitely. Youngsters are playing well out there. Now it's Nylon going back of his own goal. Eight forty-one is the time left in the hockey game. He tried to pass on the right side for Morrison, who was breaking in, and Nylon hammered to Pitson in against the boards in front of the Team Canada bench. The pass into the center ice area, knocked down by the Soviets. There's been some tremendous hitting in this hockey game by both teams. Now it's Nylon again at the line. A pass over on the wing. Here's a two-on-one. Wilson and Morrison. Wilson moving into slot shot, and it's deflected. Up against the boards as Morrison went for the goal and collided with the Soviet goaltender Samoloff. Morrison in front. Can't get a stick on it. And it's cleared by Biakin. Now Starkov lead pass for Kadiasov. 
He tried to give it back to Starkoff, and he in turn tried to feed it in front and was knocked down by the Canadian team. Kerry Wilson goes back of his own goal. 7.44 is the time remaining in the game. Here's Moeller cutting from the corner, trying to play it in front. In back of the goal now, Mike Moeller gets it. Mike Moeller cutting in front, feeds it back to the line. Boutillier with his own goal! I believe that was going wide of the net when it deflected off a stick or a skate into the Soviet goal. Some good work, of course, by Team Canada. And Mike Moeller again gets that puck back in the point. Now the shot by Basilia goes off the Soviet defenseman, number seven. And it's a goal for Carl Batilla, he's second of the night. But good work by Mike Moeller behind the net to get that puck back to the point. I'd say, Fergie, that Kurashev really directed that puck in quite nicely for Team Canada, didn't yeah, he? he's a handy little <laughs> fellow to have on your side. <laughs> That's what the... Work of it, a player in front of the goal will sometimes produce, and it was Scott Arneal in front of that Soviet goal. Kurashev was trying to move him out of there, and the puck bounced off him and into the net. So it's 6-0 for Canada. Total attendance for the three games that have been played here in Winnipeg. Here's a chance for Yashin, feeding it out front, and Rossin was neatly tied up. Shot knocked down in front, the puck is to the corner, Yashin taken in against the boards, he falls. The puck still loose in the corner. Shapitsin comes in to help out for Yashin. Yashin is spun around, and finally it's brought out by the Canadian team, half side into the center ice area for Moeller. Moeller tried to play it back to him, knocked down by the Soviets and almost stolen by Scott Arneal. Shapitsin in across the line for Rossin. Rossin slap shot and it hit Boutillier and went to the corner. Now, going in back of the goal and into the corner is Butcher. Up along the boards for Arneal. He fires it down the ice. And this will produce an icing call against the Canadian team. Wells and Don Cherry at the Winnipeg Arena. Team Canada enjoying a 6-0 lead over the Soviet Union in this World Junior Tournament. Murray tried to work to the corner, broken up by the Soviets, the pass to Vasiliev. Vasiliev in across the line, feeding it in front for Semenov. He couldn't get a shot away. Kluzak had done a good job in tying up Vasiliev, and finally Kluzak holds it against the boards for the faceoff. A moment ago, I started to give you the total attendance for the three games in Winnipeg, 18,176 with almost 11,000 watching action this afternoon. There's Dave King there. He's, he still can't manage to smile, Don. I, I don't know. If I was being the Russian 6-0, I, I think I'd certainly crack a smile. How about you, Fergie? I think there's a lot of people in Canada who are cracking smiles right now. These youngsters have played extremely well today. Quite a difference when you skate out onto the ice representing your country in international competition. A lot of pressure on you. And these young fellows have certainly responded in this game this afternoon at the Winnipeg Arena. In the center ice area, it's Semenov for the Soviets. Too far for Vasiliev. Puzak goes back into his own zone. The penalty coming up. Against the Soviet Union, Vasiliev. A high sticking call against the Soviet player. So with 518 remaining, Another power play opportunity for Team Canada. Don, it's, well, we're seeing things that, that, that really are uncommon with the Russians, and that is taking some penalties. But they're intimidated by the score. We see that, that bad, almost hooking, holding, whatever you want to really call it. Just a, a very bad penalty. But when it's 6 nothing, I think the, the Russians obviously know that this game is, is well over. Jim Patrick receiving some attention at the Canadian bench. He was the victim of that high-sticking call against Vasiliev of the Soviet Union. The Canadian team now with Randy Moeller going back into his own zone for Eakin. Eakin for Morrison to Sear. In across the line, he lost it to Biakin. Biakin is pushed in against the boards by Eakin. And the Soviets try and clear it out. They're unable to get it out of there as Sear keeps it in at the line. 
125 the time left in the penalty. Now it's Starkov back of his own goal for Biakin. Tiurikov on the left side to Starkov. He's got Trukno with him. Going off his penalty, goes back to his own line to Tierkov. So far, the Soviets have effectively killed off this penalty. A lead pass knocked down at the line. Here's Eakin with it. Eakin going back of the goal for Morrison. Morrison moving out. Backhand shot that is deflected back of the net. Eakin tried to center it. He was tied up by Biakin. It comes to Morrison to the line. Randy Moore winding up. That shot hit a leg. Another shot. A weak one stood off the end of Morrison's stick. And finally, the Soviets clear it down the ice with 3.50 remaining in the hockey game. 32 seconds in the penalty to Vasiliev. 6 nothing. Team Canada leading the Soviet Union. Brought in by Nyland. It deflects off a player to the corner, and the Soviets fired off the boards and down the ice. Now it's Nyland back of his own goal. Almost a bad move as he started out against Priak and then was forced back at the net again. Just five seconds left in the penalty. And Vasiliev steps back in the ice as Dave Morrison brings it in across the line. Flips it into the corner for Wilson. Wilson goes back of the net, dodges a check. Wilson still controlling it. Wilson now working to the corner. Right out in front and it's split off Morrison just wide. Wilson gets it again. Wilson for Team Canada. Playing it back in behind the goal. Streeby tried to center it. It goes off a leg. Picked up by Morrison. Back to the point. Randy Moeller took a shot at the side of the net. The Canadian team. And Wilson was unable to control it as he had it in his skates and tried to get a stick on it but couldn't get the shot away. Well, it's 6 nothing. Canada leading the Soviet Union with 2.43 remaining. Let's again test your hockey knowledge. The last man to coach both a Memorial Cup winner and a Stanley Cup winner. Bergie, were you playing the year that he coached the Stanley Cup champions? The, uh, I'm oh, a, you know the answer. I don't know the answer to that one. <laughs> I had three of the other ones. I didn't have that one. <laughs> the face-off to the right of Samoloff and the Soviet goal. Hapshide is out there with Moeller and Arneal. 2.43. The time remaining in the hockey game. 6-0 Canada leading. Back to the line for Butcher. His shot is wide. Moeller back of the net for Hapshide. Having a little difficulty controlling it. Hapshide who plays for the Saskatoon Blades. A native of Swift Current. Scored a goal. A pretty goal earlier in this third period. Now it's Moeller up front. Arneal scores! Scott Arneal who has been run times and has had a lot of bad luck in front of that Soviet goal. Finally got enough wood on that one to get it past Samoloff. Here's, here's a replay here. Good work by Randy Moeller and Mark Hadshai. Goal center test right now. The puck comes out to Arneal who's right there where he should be. Puts the puck behind Samoloff and it's a good thing. Watch this. Mike Moeller's been a tower of strength in the corners all day. And Scott Arneal right in front of the net and puts it home. That's been a real good hockey line, Mark Hapshide, Mike Mahler, and Scott Arneal. There's got to be an awful lot of proud coaches in Canadian Major Junior Hockey today because they've done some pretty fine jobs with all these young hockey players they sent for this tournament. And John, I think we would be remiss if we did not mention the fact that these teams are sacrificing their position in league play, etc., by letting some of this outstanding young talent go to the Canadian national team for this tournament. You're right, John, and a lot of them are playing today. You know, it's, it's just a great thing for us. It's a little measure of revenge off of the Canadian hockey. And it just shows you that good product and how much hockey is getting better in Canada. There's no doubt about it. It's pretty good. They just put an outstanding game. Of course, Dave King is... Uh, you, you take a, a group of young all-stars and mold them together, and Dave King and Sherry Basson have done an excellent job with them. 7 nothing, Canada leading the Soviet Union. And it's been tough, as Bob Strum was saying. Many of these young fellows, some of them, won just 17 years of age, away from home over the Christmas season. However, they are getting their Christmas present a day late, I guess you might say, with this domination of the Soviet Union. Don, hockey's always been a sacrifice. you got to sacrifice to be a hockey player. These young boys are doing it. Chance again for Canada as Arneal just flipped it wide. 
Samilov was down in the Soviet goal, and it was just flipped wide as first Moeller, then Havshide, and then Arneel had a chance. Here's the Soviet center. The shot just goes wide as Biakin broke in on the wing. Now it's loose in the Canadian zone and finally brought out by Butcher over on the right side for Moeller. Back to Butcher. Butcher trying to feed it in front, and Arneel couldn't catch up with it. Arneel working from the corner, moving out in front, a backhand shot, and a good save by Samilov as he got that one between his legs. Great smart move by Scott Arneel, heading for the net too. Good save by Samilov, but Arneel was in the corner, from out in front of the net, looked for someone to pass to, anybody else is tied up, and headed right for the net. A good save by Samilov. Well, what was your answer to our hockey quiz? If you said Rudy Pillis, you were absolutely right. The St. Catharines teepees twice, and the Chicago Blackhawks in 60 and 61. And of course, Rudy Pillis was also involved with the Winnipeg Jets in the World Hockey Association. Look at hockey player played in that TP team, Stan Makita. Had some pretty good ones wearing the uniform of the Blackhawks, too. <laughs> That's quite true, son. <laughs> LeMay from the corner, moving in front, quick shot, and the save by Samilov. 35-20 now, the shot's on goal in favor of the Canadian team. They have totally dominated this third period, and it's so uncharacteristic of the Soviets in international matches in the past, it's usually they who control play in the third. That's quite true. Here's another chance. In front of the net, they jam away at it again as Murray took the shot, and it hit a traffic jam in front of the Soviet goal. Kadyasov coming out of his own zone, overskated it. Now Belov tries a long lead pass. Schepter with a long shot wide of the goal. Kadyasov back to the point. Kurashev took a shot, knocked down in front. 40 seconds remaining in the hockey game. 7-0, Team Canada leading. And you'll see them storm out of there and head for goaltender Mike Moffat at that final buzzer. Lead pass, LeMay looking for Patrick. It went off a skate. Now it's played in back of the net. Murray goes in there for the Canadian team. Murray controlling it in the corner. Finally, he loses it with 18 seconds remaining. Here's a two-on-one break for the Soviets. Now it's step in across the line, and Butcher was able to get back and cover up. Nine seconds remaining. The countdown has begun at the Winnipeg Arena. The Canadian team moving it back into their own zone. They're quite content to run out the clock, and it's 7-0 Canada over the Soviets in the World Junior Tournament, and that produces a standing ovation from 11,000 spectators at the Winnipeg Arena as Mike Moffat is mobbed in the Canadian goal. He had 20 saves to make during the course of this game. He made a couple of 